Hey guys, I'm back and I've been a bad, bad girl and I've done a bad, bad thing. <laughs> I've gone book shopping several times recently and I've purchased a ton of books. Most of them are fiction with just a few nonfiction and I want to share part one of that book haul with you today. I'm expecting that it'll probably be a three or even a four part book haul so that the video isn't too, too long. But I hope you'll enjoy seeing the fiction books that I've purchased lately. And as always, if you've read any of them, I'd love to know which ones you think I should read first. Uh, if you're interested in reading any of them or doing a buddy read, let me know down in the comments. So first up is a book called The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. Ruth Ware is best known for a book called In the Dark Dark Wood, I believe, which I had wanted to read. It's a thriller and I haven't. And then um, she's also recently written The Woman in Cabin 10, which is another mystery thriller, which is my book club book for October. But I saw this one on the shelves when I was book shopping, and I thought, wow, she's got another one. Now, I love a good mystery thriller, thriller and this one sounds pretty good. This tells the story of four girls who are friends from boarding school. I believe this takes place in the UK and um, the girls played something called the lying game in school where they told up lies and made up stories and fast forward into the future where they've all gone their separate ways and somebody out walking their dog finds something. Um, it's not clear from the dust jacket whether they find a body or something else that's dark and mysterious but the girls come back together and we get to find out what's going on um, the dust jacket says it's twisty and it's suspenseful and it's a thriller and I love twisty suspenseful thrillers so I hope it'll be like a roller coaster ride because I'm really in the mood for something like that right now. Lion Game by Ruth Ware. And then I have A Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. This is a beautiful short little book. I didn't realize when I purchased it that it was an off size. It's got a beautiful buttery velvet cover. I'm quite excited about it. I'm a little bit afraid of this horse head, but I digress. So this says a young woman is lying, dying in a rural hospital clinic. There's a young man sitting with her who's not her son and she's not his mother, but they have some sort of familial bond perhaps. And this says it's a haunting story, it's a nightmare come to life, it's a ghost story, it's a love story, it's unsettling. Um, those things all sound super intriguing. And I know Conrad over at Seven Days at Sea, which is not currently an active YouTube channel, sadly, uh, reviewed it and talked about it and, and gave it good reviews, which is one of the reasons why I purchased it. And this is her first novel. She's an author from Buenos Aires and she lives in Berlin. And then I got a book called Girl in Snow by Danya Kukafka. And I just thought that was a really interesting cover with this kind of creepy eye. And this says that a high school student is found murdered. Um, and in the story, it focuses on the boy who loved the girl. It focuses on the detective who's been assigned the case, the murder case, and on a girl who coveted her life, maybe was a stalker, um, it's not clear. And it says it explores um, identity and the thin line between love and obsession, between truth and memory. And this is the author's first novel. So. Um, that's two first novels, and I usually shy away from debut authors, but in this case, it just sounded intriguing, and I think you can tell already that I was in the mood for stories that are suspenseful or so, sort of um, psychologically unsettling in one way or another, so this one definitely piqued my interest. Next up is one that I'm very excited about. I know that the ladies over at Book Riot talked about it, and I'm pretty sure I've read reviews of it in most of the periodicals where I get book review information from. It's See What I Have Done, which is an absolutely stunning cover, and it's by Sarah Schmidt. This is a fictional retelling of the Lizzie Borden murder case. Lizzie Borden is a true story, a woman in 1892 who 
found her father and stepmother murdered. She was accused of killing them. You've probably heard the kind of sing-song nursery rhyme, Lizzie Borden took an axe, killed her father in 40 wax. I don't know, something like that. In any case, um, she was accused of murder and put on trial. I believe she was acquitted. Um, but that story has always completely fascinated me and unsettled me. Um, if she did it, this idea of someone killing their parent, killing someone who's, you know, given them life is, you know, just speaks to something really visceral and deep and unsettling. And I'm excited to read the fictional account of this. I have a feeling it's going to be a real barn burner. We'll see. And then I have a book that a gentleman who works at my local bookstore recommended to me. Now, I have found through the years um, kind of mixed results with taking book recommendations from um, booksellers. Um, just because I feel like unless they know your book tastes really well or unless they know you really well, they, they're not necessarily going to be able to pick a book that's sort of on target for you. Um, however, he and I were talking about the fact that I was craving a good mystery and was kind of hoping to find an author that I could attach to where there would be a good backlist. So if I did like something, I could read another something and another something. And he recommended Louise Penny. And this book is called Still Life. This was the book that he recommended for me. Um, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> except for that I'm going to give it a try. So if any of you have read Louise Penny and are familiar with her, please tell me it was a good experience because I recently took a recommendation from a friend uh, for Dick Francis and I hated the book that I read by Dick Francis. So I hope Louise Penny will not let me down because she has a good backlist for me to get into. Last but not least, I'm ending with a non-fiction book. This one sounds so good, guys. This is Reading with Patrick, A Teacher, a Student, and a Life-Changing Friendship by Michelle Kuo. This young lady was doing a Teach for America program after she graduated for Harvard. She was sent to an inner city area. Um, she ended up leaving, but one of her former students was someone she had formed a bond with. And when she found out that he was arrested and in jail, she felt quite guilty as though somehow she had let him down. And so she starts visiting him in jail and they start reading books together and discussing them together. And obviously the gist of it is, I'm sure, that this young man, Patrick, is completely changed by her presence and by his reading and their discussions about books. And obviously this young lady is changed by his presence and by their discussions with books. I love um, a story that, a true story that is hopeful and idealistic. And, um, you know, I'm such a cynic. It's nice to read something that strips a little bit of my cynicism away from me. So those are the books that I purchased recently, part one anyway. I'll be back with part two another time, but if you've read any of these, as always, let me know. If anyone's interested in doing a buddy read of one of these, let me know. Um, if you really want to do a buddy read, we don't. you don't have to have a YouTube channel. We can talk on Voxer. We can talk on Twitter. Um, I actually prefer Voxer because I actually like to talk rather than type because I sit at a computer all day. I get tired of typing. Anyway, if you're interested in buddy reading any of them, let me know. Thanks, guys. See you soon.